Cinderella by Paul Galdon. Once there was lived a nobleman who, after his first wife died, took for his second wife the haughtiest and proudest woman in the land. She had two daughters who were just like her. The nobleman himself had a daughter who was sweet and as kind as her own mother had been. The stepmother was jealous of her husband's daughter, for the girl's goodness made her own daughter seem even more unpleasant. The stepmother commanded the girl to clean the house and wait on her and her daughters morning and night. While the girl slept in the attic on a straw mat, her stepsisters had fine rooms with soft beds and tall mirrors for in which they could admire themselves from head to foot. She suffered all patiently, never complaining to her father. When her daily work was done, she would rest by the chimney amongst the ashes, and her sisters gave her the names Cinderella. Cinderella, in her shabby clothes, was far more beautiful than her rich, richly dressed stepsisters. That year, the king's son gave a ball and invited all the notables from far and near, including Cinderella's stepsisters. They were soon busy choosing their gowns, petticoats, and headdresses that would be most becoming on them. This made more work for Cinderella, for it was she who did the mending and ironing. At last the great day arrived. The stepsister's hair was arranged in the most fashionable styles, with ribbons for the best shops. The stepsisters called Cinderella for advice since they trusted her help in making them look their best. While she waited on them, they asked, Cinderella, would you not like to go to the ball? Oh, you are making fun of me, she replied. It's not such a place for such as I. You're right, they said. People would laugh to see such a cinder made at the ball. Cinderella was too sweet to be angry with them, but as she watched them set out for the ball, she could no longer hold back her tears. Suddenly her godmother, who was a fairy, appeared. What's the matter, child? she asked. I wish... I wish I could, was all Cinderella could say through her sobs. You wish you could go to the ball, isn't that so? Yes, Cinderella agreed and sighed sadly. Well, said the godmother, just be a good girl and I will see that you go. First, she said, run to the garden and bring me a pumpkin. Cinderella hurried to find one and brought it to her godmother, who struck it with her wand, and instantly it turned into a fine golden coach. Then her godmother opened the mouse trap and released six live mice. She gently tapped each one with her wand. At once the mice became elegant set of fine dappled gray horses. Now I must find something to change into a coachman, said the godmother. Cinderella brought out the rat trap and in it were three huge rats. The godmother chose the one of the longest whiskers. When she touched it with her wand, it became a fat, jolly coachman who had the smartest mustache to be seen. Now, she said to Cinderella, go to the garden child and bring me the six lizards hiding behind the watering pot. The lizards were turned into footmen, dressed into gleaming livery. They stood in position around the coach as if they had been doing nothing else all their lives. The godmother then said to, Cinderella, said to Cinderella, Now you have a coach fit to carry you to the ball. Aren't you pleased? Oh, yes, cried Cinderella. But can I go there as I am in these nasty rags? Her godmother waved her wand over Cinderella and turned her tattered clothes into a gown set with sparkling jewels. Her shoes were a pair of glass slippers, the prettiest in the world. Cinderella's godmother warned, You must leave the ball before midnight or the coach will once again be a pumpkin, the horses will be mice, the footmen lizards, the coachman a rat, and your clothes will become rags as before. I promise, dear godmother, and Cinderella set out for the palace, bursting with joy. When Cinderella arrived at the ball, the king's son was told of the great princess whom nobody knew. He hurried to help her alight from the coach and led her into the great hall. The dancing stopped, the musician ceased to play, and a murmur rose. How beautiful she is! The king whispered to the queen that had been a long time since she'd seen a girl so lovely. 
The men were fascinated by her beauty. The ladies studied her clothes so that they could have some made just like them. The prince asked Cinderella to dance with him. She was so graceful that the company admired her more and more. Cinderella sat next to the prince at dinner, but he was so absorbed by their conversation that he did not eat a bite. After dinner, Cinderella spoke pleasantly with her sisters. She graciously shared some of her fruit the prince had given her. They did not recognize their shabby stepsister at all. When the clock struck a quarter to twelve, Cinderella curtsied deeply and hurried away as fast as she could. When she got home, Cinderella thanked her fairy godmother, and the prince had begged her to come again to another ball the following night. But her godmother could say, before her godmother could say anything, her two stepsisters arrived. How long you have stayed, Cinderella said, yawning and rubbing her eyes as if she just awakened. If you'd been at the ball, said one of her sisters, you would not have felt sleepy. A beautiful princess came, one of the loveliest ever seen. She was so polite and even visited with us. But her name is a mystery. The prince would give anything to know who she is. Cinderella was secretly delighted. She smiled and said, The princess must have been very beautiful indeed. How fortunate you have been. Oh, please, couldn't you lend me a plain gown so that my eye might go to the ball and see her too? Well, really, cried her haughty stepsister. Lend my clothes to a dirty cinder grub like you? I'd be a fool. Cinderella had expected such an answer. The next day, the two stepsisters were again at the ball, and so was Cinderella. The prince spoke so kindly to her and stayed by her side all night. Cinderella forgot all about her godmother's warning. Suddenly, she heard the clock strike midnight. She fled the ballroom. The prince followed her, but all he found was one of the little glass slippers. The guards at the palace gates had seen no one leave but a girl in ragged work clothes. Cinderella arrived home quite out of breath. Nothing at all of her finery was left but the maid of her slippers she had lost. When the sisters returned from the ball, Cinderella asked if the fine lady had been there. They told her yes, but at the stroke of midnight the f they f she fled in such a haste that she dropped one of her little glass slippers, the prettiest in the world. The prince had picked it up and sat gazing at it for the rest of the night. He must be deeply in love with a beautiful princess, said the younger stepsister. Which was true. For a few days later, the king's herald read a proclamation that the king's son would marry the girl whose foot the slipper fit. The prince's messengers went about trying the slipper on all the women in the land. It was even brought to the two stepsisters. Neither could force her foot into the slipper. Finally, Cinderella laughed and said, Why not let me see if it will fit me? The sisters sneered, but the king's messengers said it was only fair. As he placed the slipper on her small foot, he saw that it fit snugly as if it had been made of wax. Then, the amazement of the sisters, Cinderella drew the other slipper from her pocket. Suddenly, Cinderella's godmother appeared and turned her rags into a gown even more magnificent than the ones she had worn before. The two sisters begged Cinderella's pardon for treating her so badly. Cinderella hugged them and said she still loved them with all her heart, and asked them to always love her. Cinderella was taken to the young prince, and a few days later they were married. Cinderella, who was as good as she was beautiful, brought her two stepsisters to live at the palace as well, and soon they married two great lords of the court. The End